Hello, obvious shiny thing. What are these symbols? I can feel a mechanism, but it doesn't work. You feel the mechanism, but it doesn't work. Well, that was a shield. Wait, that's a shield. That's the wrong thing. Right. I need a sword and a moon. Sword. One last switch and... Flower. Moon. Voila. I am free! Is the fireplace gonna open? The big ass fireplace. Oh, there it goes. Oh, we're going way down. Ancient Tome, 1217. An angel came to me. Blessed be to God. Michael appeared to me last night in all his glory, shaped in glorious blood, to grant me eternal life at the dusk of my life. The apparition was so sublime and terrible that I could not help but lower my head and close my eyes. Stu uh, struck by the divine gift, I fell to the ground, only to awake in the next night. You will serve me as you served your kings, said the angel before, striking me with all his power. You will protect this land through the eons to come. For all who knew me, I should now hide and retreat, for they consider me dead. Soon, I will leave the company of men to serve my new purpose. Blessed be God. 1350. Michael appeared to me last night in my retreat under the temple church and asked me to prepare for battle. The land must be saved. Death is everywhere. The Black Death. An epidemic sent by the devil himself to punish mortals all over the world. My arm is strong. In the name of God, I shall smite the enemies of mankind. England shall prevail. 1569. It is almost twenty years since my fight, my, f my fight started against the devil and the end is uncertain. From time to time the plague, the Black Death, reappears in a village, in a town. And each time the vicious minions of hell approach to get their share of the mortals' suffering. Vampires. Dreadful creatures. I won't let this land collapse until my last breath. I'll serve and protect England. Tonight. 1578. Tonight in the small village of Hodston, I met the most delicate soul I've seen for a long time. She was singing for the dead, singing for those she knew and loved, those killed by a plague outbreak, without fearing for her own life. Her voice moved me, so I chose to let her live. I offered her eternal life as a reward for her virtue and most pious attitude. Her name... Is Elizabeth Englewood. I'm not alone anymore. Together, we shall praise God in all its glory for eons to come. 1618. My heart is breaking. My soul is bleeding. Tonight, my dear Elizabeth left me. I have taught her all I knew. All she needed to know. Now, she must walk her own path through the ages. This is her wish, and I will respect it. Elizabeth Englewood, my sweet daughter, is gone, for she now wants to be known as Elizabeth Blackwood. I made her a promise. If she ever comes back to Hodston, why do you do that? If she ever comes back to Hodston, she will find me there, managing the bull in her parents owned before dying. William Marshall shall disappear for a few times. Na uh, William Marshall, Mar what? Disappear for a few times? Huh. William Marshall shall disappear for a few times to now that the Black Death is no more. That's a strange sentence. Until we meet again, I shall be known as William Thorne, waiting for my angel to come back. 1665. The devil's at work again. The Great Plague is back, reaping thousands of lives in London. I must sell the bull in and go there once more. William Marshall shall protect the land. 1666. What have I done? I let the devil infect me. God, forgive me. The terrifying creature I had to defeat 
was a demon straight from hell, an abomination of the flesh, a walking apocalypse. I had to trap the dreadful creature in St. Paul's church and set the building on fire. Without the advice of Michael, I don't know if I could have defeated my enemy. The flames cleansed the city of the demon's presence, but half of London burnt down. Ever since, I've dreamt of red flood, of slaughter and rage. It's like the disaster has tainted my blood, my very soul. For the first time in centuries, I'm afraid. I shall crawl back to my retreat and pray to God for mercy and mercy for my infected soul. 1666, I mean 67, Elizabeth came to me. She said she felt my pain and rushed to save me. My poor daughter, blinded by rage, intoxicated by the blood of hate, I bit her. She fled, shocked by my, by, by, by my betrayal. I laughed and cried as she cursed me. God, have I betrayed you? Do you abandon me? 1712, my prayers have been heard. I have found the strength to resist the need for blood, the never-ending hunger. My poor Elizabeth, will you forgive me? I've heard you now kill and take pleasure in bloodbath with this new progeny of yours. You're a victim in all this. What have I done? I swear I will find a way to make amends for what I have done to you. I swear I shall only rest once I know how to appease the blood of hate. 1785. The Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole finally agreed to meet me in London. They promised to meet inside the new Cathedral of St. Paul. I like the wit and solemnity of those men. What, what a symbol to choose the place where I defeated this disaster, but also the place where I fell. Stop doing that. I agreed to their proposition. There, in the sacred silence of the church and under the eye of God, they respectfully listened to me. They acknowledged my victory against this evil creature, the Dos Astro, Eater of Stars who only wished to spread death and pestilence all around her. Since they acknowledged my will to save London in 1666, they heard my request, my burning desire to stop the blood of hate. Their primate became, uh, promised to come back to me, uh, to me with an answer. The primate of St. Paul Stoll wrote back to me with just a name, the Terror of Angels. According to him, the ancient artifact could heal anything. Cleanse any blackened soul and purify my blood. Blessed be the Lord, it took me more than a hundred years to find a cure for the blood hate, but I may finally have found it. Soon the rage shall end. Soon I may repair the wrong I did and cleanse my failures. Now all I need to do is retrieve the necessary ingredients to create the artifact, blood of the purest heart mixed with the blood of a king. To find such rare ingredients is not what worries me most, for time is on my side. It's the last part that worries me. Pure essence of garlic. I'm afraid it will literally hurt like hell when I drink the antidote. If that's the price to pay to cleanse my soul and correct my mistakes, I am ready to endure this excruciating pain. 1786. I finally managed to gather all the ingredients needed to concoct the tear of angels. Blood of the purest heart of fortitude, blood of the king of courage, garlic essence for the painful cleansing. After months of impatience, almost made me mad by the hunger. I waited again and again, until finally Elizabeth cautiously came to me. As promised, I had chained myself to be sure I would not attack her again. I did not recognize my sweet daughter at first, for she was, she only was Lady Blackwood now, the dreadful mistress of the dark who took delight in slaughter and carnage in France. She smirked as I apologized and cried for what I had inflicted to her. She shouted at me when I tried to explain that to her, that my bite had infected her, had given her the blood of hate, now burning in her veins, in her soul. I told her I found the cure, that I have managed to create one dose of the antidote. I gave it to her, to give her back her previous peaceful life. In exchange, I only asked her to take care of me, for I intended to be locked down in my tomb chained if necessary to impeach me from feeding on any mortal or immortal she reluctantly took the tear of angels and left i hope to see her again soon cured and at peace 1794 she came back to me finally cured healthy joyful 
My Elizabeth. Stop that. I don't know why that happens. She told me she had drunk the antidote about a year ago in France after witnessing and taking part in the massacre of an entire orphanage caused by the blood of hate. That's when the Lady Blackwood died, she said. She promised that she would take care of me now. That's all I ask, as I repent for the murdered souls caused by my negligence of more than a hundred years. 1795. My dearest daughter came back last week to tell me the good news. She has uh, recently bought a castle in Scotland. She will soon finance the renovation of the castle crypt to provide me a new retreat, far from temptation, far from the noisy, crowded cities. I can't wait to embrace the solitude, find peace I need to refrain from killing. God, please give me the strength to re resist the urges during the journey from London to my new domain. Before I leave, I should give a copy of the memoirs the Brotherhood of Pain Pain uh, St. Paul's stole, without the most shameful and sensible information, of course. Soon I shall leave London to pursue my penance. There I shall find peace at last, with the support of my resuscitated Elizabeth. So he is still alive, and he's apparently here. He's apparently been eternally chained right be right beneath our feet somewhere down here, so that he can never spread anymore. And that the reason why Elizabeth freaked out is because she was supposed to be cured, but apparently the dose that cured her just made her healthy. It cured the symptoms, but she's still a carrier, so she can still unleash what she was on people and she's ashamed of what she was she wiped out in an orphanage on her own and she was previously peaceful it's this dark chapter where she was a different person against her own will and she was forced to relive that and then the and then that then then she knows that that was spreading and that's a huge problem for her also by the way if anyone's curious there's a show that's a decent companion piece to this game which is called uh the strain it's a show by Guillermo del Toro. Uh, had, ran for like three or four seasons, I think, on FX. It's over now. Uh, it's a show where a vampire outbreak takes place in New York City, which is which is conveniently an island separated by rivers and bridges, which vampires can't cross willingly. And uh, the entire thing is framed specifically in the, in the it's actually like really similar to this game in a lot of ways that's kind of distracting i don't know if i mentioned it before in this playthrough or not but i i watched that entire show before playing this game and the direct comparison finding out that the uh the vampire are little is like a, a mega vampire that's been around for centuries is the re original cause of the plague it's really hard not to think of it stop doing that once again i'll tell you guys i can't pause the game pressing pause does not bring the menu up so i don't know how that's happening or why it's weird but uh, the the show follows a character that works for the CDC, I think. Yeah, he works for the CDC, and so he's trying to figure out how to d use his methods to to fix the thing, like how to how to uh, how to manufacture a cure, or how how to uh, make sure that there are quarantine things in play, and so on and so forth. Because because they're trying to fight against the fact that all of New York is currently infected with a vampire plague, and it's very much framed as a plague, much like it is in this game. And the the, the specific thing that made me really, really think specifically of, uh, of, of the strain was actually the scene where Jonathan Reed turned uh, McCollum into a vampire. Because that was the one where we, we saw him turn into a vampire, and we, like, it was via this... In the, in the other instances, people, like, drink from you. But in that specific scene, Jonathan grabbed his head and tilted it back, forced his mouth open, and like regurgitated blood down his throat, which is fucking brutal. And that's how he became a vampire. And I'm like, that's exactly how people uh, how, how people usually become like the the proper vampires in a uh, in the strain. In fact, the strain also has the same dichotomy between like proper vampires versus the like the Ekons, which they're not called that though, versus what are essentially skulls. There are these creatures that have like a creepy appendage that comes out of their mouth and they shoot out like an extended tentacle with a mouth on the end of it that latches onto you. So in the in the in that show, vampires can attack at a distance of like four feet basically, because they have like a stinger that comes out of their mouth that they can drain you from with that. 
but also all of their blood is full of these little worms and if they even so much as touch your skin they go into your body and infect you and you're totally screwed at that point uh which actually is comparable to the vampire series necroscope which is a specific which specifically has this element of vampires where the uh where the, the thing that makes you a vampire is the parasitic organism inside of your body like a leech or a slug or whatever and it can burrow directly through your skin on contact and permanently transform your body and 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 become part of your body and so on like that uh but the, the strain actually has a ton of similarities uh in the storytelling and the premise and even the mechanics of the vampires and the different social classes of vampires and so on that this game has to the point where i almost almost convinced that they must have seen the strain when they made this game unless there's just uh, even older more pronounced very 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 similar influences because i mean it's all the vampire legends so i and i'm not super well versed in vampire stuff so this stuff may have been explored over and over again but that's what's up but yeah maybe check out the strain it's an enjoyable show it's not mind-blowing or anything but i mean it's a fucking vampire show like it's about what you expect and Guillermo del Toro created monsters that are really uncomfortable to look at and cre are really creepy. And, uh, and Samwise Gamgee's in that show. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, that one guy. <laughs> the guy that played the first Doctor recently. And Filch. Is it named Filch from, uh, Harry Potter? Oops. Or, uh, the big, bad, most hated Red Wedding character from Game of Thrones. That guy. He's pretty good in this in this strain. Drop your sword, father. You have nothing to be afraid of. Shall we abandon this then? Shall we lower our heads? No. No. You taught me that. Blood is approaching. Old but young. How strange. Shall I drink it? Smite it? No, father. He is a friend. Please, rest. I'll take care of it. Gorsh and Elizabeth. Deceit runs through these veins. I know, Father. What took you so long, Jonathan? Is this... really him? Yes. This is William Marshall. First Earl of Pembroke, servant of five mortal kings former regent and saviour of England. The greatest knight who ever lived, according to some. And you called him father? For he gave me eternal life, and much more. I have so many questions, Elizabeth. You always had questions, Dr. Reed. Now that I stand before you both, in this vault, I know not where to begin. We still have a few minutes left. Where are we? What is this place? This is the Ashbury Estate. I inherited the title when I purchased the castle. Is this your retreat? Something of a secret place? It's more of a sanctuary, really. This is where I take care of my father. Ever since he became... Well. Are you not afraid someone might discover you here? It's not that hard to find. Do not assume that I would hesitate to silence anyone who tried to reveal my secret. Fortunately, it has rarely come to that. Why did you flee here? When you told me I was the healthy carrier, I had nowhere else to go. You mean you had to return to the real source of this scourge? Yes. To end it, once and for all. Will you go back to London? No, Jonathan. I do not intend to. And what of your daughter? 
Charlotte is a strong, independent woman who's about to come into money. I took care of everything. Now it's time for her to shape her future. Now we have an additional context for why she won't turn Charlotte specifically is because Charlotte would then become a plague carrier. Or at least, well, I guess she didn't know that though. So I guess that's not actually fully the case. Also, there's just a fire burning in the background that I feel like we're not directly commenting on. That's not supposed to be there. That's not a normal, reasonable fire back there. I have destroyed the disaster, this creature that Harriet Jones had become. The epidemic is no more, and London will recover. In time. Yes. You did well, Jonathan. You truly saved the city. Yes, we did. Despite all obstacles. I'm truly convinced we did it together, Elizabeth. I cannot bear knowing I was the cause of all this. Through the use of my own blood. No. This catastrophe was the result of unethical experimentation. And the will of a creature so inexplicably evil, she exceeds all the terrible wonders I have seen since my death. But it was my blood all along. My corrupted blood of hate. The poisoned blood of my father. A healthy carrier. That's all I am. Why are you hiding William Marshall here? How could I not take care of him? He sacrificed himself by giving me the only dose of antidote he had. He gave you the antidote? Yes. And in doing so, he knew he'd have to be confined here. And yet he volunteered. That's how great a man William Marshall was. And still is. What do you do for him? I visit him as often as possible. I paint the landscapes he will never see again. I feed him with my blood. You feed him? You barely sustain yourself on the weak blood of the dying, yet you give him your blood? After he saved me from the blood rage, I swore I would never kill to feed. He said the same. So why don't you just do the same journey he went on and find the ingredients for another dose of the antidote? Seems apparently doable, because I also did it myself. Is he dangerous? What do you think? He is a thirsty Ekon who has not fed in centuries. An elder vampire driven by an urge to kill and spread the blood of hate. No redemption, then. And yet he thinks he has been offered immortality by the angels to protect the feeble and to smite the unholy. Can he communicate? Yes. Sometimes he even seems like the noble knight who saved and raised me. But, you know, the malice never fully leaves his eyes. We could cure him. It's too late. The blood of hate has run for too long. The antidote would not work on him. I tried. Believe me, I tried. All right, that answers that question. So it just straight up doesn't work. I wonder if she's right about why, though, because we have a sample size of zero people, based of well, one person or two people. We, this this is happening like no people. This exact scenario, and we've had this weird dichotomy between male and female vampires and how they can deal with certain infections and and so on with the eye cores and stuff what if the cure what if only uh, females can be cured of this disease and, and males can't especially since she's not cured uh the symptoms are gone but she's still a carrier which means she's not fully cured herself william marshall infected you he is the true original carrier yes but he saved me by sacrificing himself saved you how the tears of angels the cleansing of impure blood by an older more powerful blood it worked on me did it not yes blood is the definitive key to our species scowls cleansing lineage 
Do you really think it worked? It has, Jonathan. I was nothing but a beast who took pleasure in slaughter. I roamed across Europe, reaping my bloody crop. It was the blood of hate, but my father's antidote cured me. Who are you, really? How could I answer that? I went through many lives and identities to reach this day. To you, I am Elizabeth Ashbury, and that's all I wish to be. I understand, and I respect your desire for privacy. Thank you, Jonathan. How did you meet William Marshall? He was an Econ for centuries when he found me. He saved me from certain death by making me his progeny. Why did he choose you? You should ask him that. Did you ever blame him? Not even when he was infected and bit me. He is my father. He raised me. He taught me how to behave. What about us? What do you mean? You know my feelings towards you, Elizabeth. But you left without a word. So I'm worried about your feelings towards me. I love you, Jonathan. I've loved you since the moment I saw you rescue poor Mr. Hampton in that filthy slaughterhouse. Forgetting the danger as you turned your back, like the newborn fool you were. I respect your privacy. Also, I read a diary that explained all of your history to an extent. So I kind of already know the past Elizabeths. Not entirely. You should have told me. No, Jonathan. The William Marshall myth lies at the heart of so many hostile plans. I could not risk jeopardizing his safety. So why did you come here? You knew I would follow you. I can't let you go. Because I know now the blood of hate is still in my veins. No one but I can put an end to this tragedy. I can help you. You can trust me, Elizabeth. I know, Jonathan. You have been the most loyal ally these last few weeks. But this is my duty. Would your protege agree to speak with me? I have so many questions for him. Go on, Jonathan. But be careful. Yes. Sir William. My God. You really are. William Marshall. You served Richard the Lionheart and his brother, King John. It is such a privilege to meet you. I did in my day. Come closer if you want to speak, for my hearing isn't what it used to be. I think your hearing is fine, sir. What is it you want then? I found your research on the antidote, the tears of the angels. What ingredients did you use? Once I understood what the ingredients were, I used the tears of King Richard and the pure blood of the valiant Bodicea. King Richard and Bodicea? How did you find such relics? It took me many years to locate their hiding place. Then I had to learn the formula. If I recall, it belonged to an ancient brotherhood. The Order of St. Paul, I believe. And did it work? Yes. The tears cleansed my poor Elizabeth's blackened heart. It was such a blessing to see her smile again. I found and defeated the disaster that was threatening to smite London. You should know that the city is safe for now, Sir William. Then may I call you brother? Did you resist its poison? Even a scratch from a beast so evil could endanger you and all those you care for. You also defeated one in 1666. 
Who was it? She was a malicious witch who spread plague throughout the city with her army of rats. She had been hiding in a bakery in Pudding Lane for months when I finally found her. How did you defeat it? We fought for hours. In the end, I had to lock her in St. Paul's Cathedral and burn the building down. I wanted to be sure she was destroyed. The blood of hate. How does it affect you? Do you feel it now? The blood of hate? Yes. Nothing more than a sneeze, really. A sneeze held for so long, you could blow a fortress down if you released it. I would like to ask you about vampires. Vampires? What about them? Considering your experience, please tell me what you know. They are terrible creatures. I have seen and fought many in my time. Foul temptresses with sharp claws and shrieking beaks. I have never seen such a creature. What are you talking about? Of course you've never seen a creature like them. Vampires are deadly, swift and implacable. Where did you encounter such creatures? The last time I saw one was in a Celtic temple near Salisbury. A terrible and godforsaken place full of ghosts and pestilence. Can we speak about the Morrigan? The Red Queen? What of her? You met her, did you not? Just once. But she never ceased to sing to me. I love her song. It is a song of blood and war. I only wish she would sometimes let me rest. Do you know who she is? I don't want to discuss this in front of my sweet Elizabeth. Why? For a time, she too could hear the red song. The steps she danced to its melody brought pain upon the world. Do you remember Murden, your maker? Only God is my maker, for he created everything on this earth. He blessed me with eternal life through his archangel, Michael. But Murden, Michael, is a vampire. He made you a blood-sucking creature of the night. Blood, yes. I used to drink it from the throats of the unworthy. Then I was punished for my deceit. During my penance, I rely entirely upon my sweet Elizabeth. Tell me about Elizabeth. How was she infected? I do not wish to discuss it. Please, Sir William. I need to know what the blood of hate is. How is it transmitted? After defeating a disaster in St. Paul's Cathedral, I return to my retreat, infected. This is where my sweet Elizabeth found me, for she heard my pain from across the sea. Where is this retreat you mentioned? In London, under Temple Church, beneath my empty tomb. I always love to sleep there while listening to the bell above. What happened then? The blood of hate had twisted me into a rage-filled man. I attacked my progeny and infected her too. Forgive me, Elizabeth. I failed you. You bit her again? Is that how she was infected with the disaster's blood? I think I understand now. Elizabeth fled, and I fell to my knees, begging for forgiveness. I swore I would find a way to make things right. How did you meet Elizabeth? Times were tough. I had awakened to protect the land from a new plague. I heard her sing for her dead family. Singing for her death to come, I chose to save her. 
When was that? It was so long ago. A few years after Elizabeth of England and Catherine of France established their alliance against Spain. What did you do? I raised her as my progeny. After she left to see the world, I rebuilt her deceased parents' inn, owned it as William Thorne for a time. Those were good years. Did you really sacrifice yourself to save her? That was the only righteous path. The blood of hate made me betray her. I am at peace here. I can think about what I've done and how I failed. Do you not want to be cured? No. This hunger is mine. I would feel empty without it. It has been part of me for so long. All I want is quiet. Silence. You agreed to be confined here then? Yes. Once I was sure she was cured, I asked to be locked down here. I deserve it. The world needs it. We could set you free, let you out. Isn't that what you want? I pray for the day I'll see the sky again. I have all but forgotten its colors. I could walk and do so many things beneath the stars. But I doubt it would be wise to release me. Then will you stay here and repent? Elizabeth told me it will not be long now. I cannot wait to feel the sweet caress of her hand on my cheek after so long as she releases me. Has the time come? Yes, Father. Why not unleash me then? To see the sky a final time? You already are the sky stars. I'm not defeated, for I welcome the sword you bear, for it is mine. You were never defeated, my lord. <gasps> Farewell, father. <laughs> and to you also, Jonathan. What do you mean? I can't stand what I've become. This healthy carrier, as you put it. The flames will purify the poison that runs in my veins. No! I won't allow this to happen. I am death, Jonathan. Wherever I go, I can't stand it. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed, champion of Murden, chosen to save England from the vampire epidemic. I could cure you. What do you mean? We are creatures of blood, Elizabeth. Everything about us is in our blood. With time, I could perfect the antidote William Marshall gave you. Trust me, for time is on our side. That is a risk I cannot take, Jonathan. I won't bring another such disaster into this world. Elizabeth, no. Trust me. I can save you. How could I trust you, Jonathan? Have you not betrayed me? I had choices to make. I forgive you, and that is my choice. <sighs> Elizabeth, I love you. Then let me go now. Wait! No!
One prayer for the summoned called by this song. Child born from darkness whose path he must find. Now the song is sung and your path chosen. England is safe, but the cost was dire. Blood and tears, both parched by cleansing flames. You've lost your way, my champion bittersweet. I am moved to pity as I feel your rampant rage void of purpose or meaning. My queen sleeps once again, and I'll soon join her slumber. Until alas, she rises, woken by the hunger never fed. I'm guessing that's a uh, you killed a bunch of dudes ending. Let's see. I can look at the a taste for blood achievement. That's for beating the game. Anarchy in the UK. Turn a district to hostile status. Oh wait, no. I think gray achievements are ones you haven't gotten yet. I'm trying to see if there's anything particularly interesting in my achievement list, which you guys can't see right now, but I'm looking around. No, doesn't seem like anything noteworthy. No major indications of like how many endings there might be. Anyway, there we go. The end. We beat vampire, 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 whatever it's called. I yeah, I guess that was the not not happy ending where they're like, "You killed people. How dare you, vampire? You're not supposed to kill people. What are you crazy?" Uh. And then, I don't know, maybe if you never kill anyone, she'd, she, like, trusts you enough to not, to not, uh, to not kill herself or something? I don't know. It's a weird morality system just because we saw her kill people, too. She fed on, she, she, she fed on the dying or whatever, but, like, she did feed on people, still. And also, like, it's impossible to go through this game without killing, like, hundreds of people. Because, like, even if you're not feeding on them as a vampire, or turning people into vampires. You straight up murder people, like, constantly. Like, so many people. Like, every every member of the Prywin pre pre group and a bunch of Skulls that are apparently uh, intelligent and so on. Like, you you kill them constantly in every direction you go in. So, like... And uh, so the, the idea that every death that ever happens is, like, some giant impact is kind of hard to s accept when that's happening. But I'm... Uh, Oh well. <laughs> it was a neat ending overall. That little setup, that the explanation of the character and how she was actually very closely tied to the infection itself and its history. It kind of satisfied what I was hoping for in that I I said early I said at some point where like something has to be going on with her, otherwise this she's not otherwise she'll just be boring. So there has to be some kind of betrayal, or reveal, or, uh, or ulterior motive. And I'm happy that the one that it turned out to be was not any of the things I was thinking of, but still at least justified that, you know, she had to have something going on, because otherwise she's just a character that just gives you some advice and then doesn't get involved in the ending. There's still, like, a lot of weak stuff going on in the story. The fact that every district is full of characters that don't do anything or relate to anything and just walk around. Uh, the fact that each of the... You make a dramatic choice about the leader of each uh, community, but then after you make that choice, they disappear from the story by and large and don't matter anymore is like a weird element too. It leads to a weird trap where like the entire story only has like three characters. Like, total. And almost every other character is only in like one or two scenes. Everyone from like the leader of the Ascalon Club to even your hospital, the guy that runs the hospital, like has a weirdly limited in amount of interaction in the story because this Elizabeth character is the only one that's guaranteed to not die and not be attacked. So she's the one character that the entire story. Uh, she's the only. She's the, she's the only consistent through line for the story. And so it's cool that the ending becomes about her to such an extent, because there's really no other characters to make the ending about. There's a few elements that could have been cooler than they were, but they were kind of 
brought up and dropped relatively quickly without a lot of development with stuff like, uh, for example, uh, our sister is like a, it's kind of a dramatic reveal that your sister's actually alive, the one you killed at the beginning of the game, and they're here, now they're a boss fight, but it comes and goes in the span of like 10 minutes, and then you're like, I guess she's dead, dead for real now, and it's like, that's a bit of a gut punch that, that they're, they were actually alive and not dead, but still disappointing. Similarly, I, uh, I find Elizabeth's connection to the plague much more interesting, but the plague itself I find kind of underwhelming. The horned vampire and the red queen are like so... They, they don't have much to them. And also they're... They have this annoying like... Vaguely Lovecraftian thing where they're like above human understanding and stuff like that and... They kind of just come and go, and it's, we, we don't really defeat her. She just kind of is like, sure, that's enough. All right, bye. But it's like, that. wait, but you were the villain of the entire game, weren't you? Like, ultimately, even after knowing about Elizabeth and Swansea, like, she's the one who created the... She is the plague that is all of this in the first place. Boy, did Swansea really fuck up. He created... He made... He, he allowed this entire plague to happen. Uh, he used Elizabeth. It's like, maybe don't just meddle with the blood of people you don't understand. D I, it's, it's a little brutal because of the, the, like, what it means for the people individually, but like, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe if you're gonna use vampire blood on somebody and you don't understand it fully, maybe be fully prepared to completely kill and incinerate and obliterate that person's body if anything goes wrong. Because... Instead, what they did is they allowed the entire plague to happen, essentially, because she, they, did, they, he meddled with blood he could never have uh, understood or been ready for. Admittedly, bit of a surprise how it turned out, because fucking that wasn't. A, it's not how blood normally works. <laughs> she, he, did, he picked the worst possible person because it wasn't just a random vampire, but the specific vampire roaming around that has like the mega plague inside of them, which allows the entire game to happen. Overall, this game's a bit of an odd duck. I, uh, I like a lot of its, uh, ideas, basically. I like the- I like the Elizabeth character storyline. I like some of the survival mechanics on paper, but I think a lot of them just don't amount to much. And this game kind of does weirdly read as like an- as like a weird, like, mixed adaptation of pathologic and strain. The vampire show and the- and the video game about managing a plague in a city that came out, like, decades sooner. Uh, a lot of ideas from both of those really heavily to the point where it's hard to not notice them. Uh, and I can't help but feel like Pathologic is able to meaningfully interact with its systems in a way that this game kind of isn't. We've beat this horse to death at this point, though, so you guys have heard my long rants about that, but, like, yeah. This game doesn't uh, systemize you being a vampire very well. You get more experience from doing quests than you do from killing people. And even though the the the, ten, the temptation to kill people is like the primary temptation of the entire game, and I don't know, the game seems to treat you like you ha like it, it's a clearly superior to not eat anybody. But the not eating anybody path means just not engaging with several of the game's systems and actively making the game less interesting and less fun. So I don't know what their goal was there, and I'm just kind of generally baffled. But there we have it. It's been this has been Vampire. See you guys next time when we try out another game.